And we welcome you to Noise11.com, Alan Badger and Phil Rudd to talk about a brand new album, Head Job, which I would imagine, Phil, you must have been, you must have had that title for like 30 years. No, it's not true. <laughs> not true. It's not, you know, it's not, no, it's not, it's not. It was one of the... Was this the title of one of the songs? Mm. Yeah, yeah. We had, you know, we had a bunch of songs and we, we, I, I've got my notebook at home with the sort of a few of the titles written in big letters to see what they look like, you know, yeah. which would make a good title. And um, Head Job just seems to be the, the one that um, you know, was the um, more interesting, slightly sort of, you know, but, um, mysterious about what it means and all that. Yeah. Which, you know, everyone knows what it means, don't they? Oh, you know. I think, uh, you know, it's the head of a company. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And all that. It's all good. No, it's a haircut, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've never walked into a hairdresser and asked for a head job. <laughs> Could get some Don't very wrong. interesting reactions Don't at South Melbourne. Yeah, there's, there's a place down in Penn Highway we used to be called the Head Shop. Yeah. You know the place? I don't know it, I don't think it's, it's there it's, anymore. This is engine mods, you know, the yeah. cops used to get their cars done there, you know, because they've got to catch the bad guys. So the bad guys then they're getting their stage one, stage two, stage three heads done, and the cops would be in there getting their pursuit motors done, and they go and chase each other on the weekend. Yeah. But it was called the head shop. And no one ever seen anything about what it's called the head shop. You know, everyone knew what was the head shop because they did head work. You know? Yeah. So anyone know what a head job is? It's a, yeah. it's a nagging partner. Yeah. Isn't it? Totally. Absolutely. Well, we know a lot about your background. We're going to talk a bit about your background in a moment because you know <laughs> I've got the Buster Brown record here, <laughs> where it all began. <laughs> Who's angry? I yeah. <laughs> Badge, uh, let's go back to uh, your beginnings because you've been in quite a number of uh, bands in yep. New Zealand. Yep. Yeah, I have been in a through few. Through the 70s. Yeah, through the 70s. Yeah. Mm. I had a band called Think in the 70s, um, and we came uh, to Sydney for a while, and we actually lived right here in South Melbourne mm -hmm. for a while. Uh, about 76 to 1980, I think it was. Um, then that, we were here just as Mushroom Records were starting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were sort of going to be first on their list in the new year. But I had a couple of members in the band that were having a difficult time here. And uh, they wanted to go home, you know. And I'm going, guys, guys, stick around, just stick around, guys. And they go, nee, nee, we going home. So it was like, fuck, no, I was quite young and, and I was like, well, fuck you then, you know, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> and so I tried reforming the band and you can never do that. Mm. We've been together for like eight years or something. We were a really good band. And they wanted to go home and I didn't, I didn't. So I stayed here and tried reforming stuff and it didn't work out. Um, so I gave it away, that one. Um, but that must have been an interesting time then. If, you, if you were in Melbourne in the mid-70s, Phil yep. was still living in Melbourne. Yep, in, in, in fact we were, we were, we were actually quite close. No, no, no. But, but, but I was around. I, I did meet a few uh, other people from Alberts and that at, over time. In fact, Alberts came into one of our rehearsals one day, someone from Alberts, and um, he'd just been in South Africa, I think, with John Paul Young. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about ACDC, telling us about it and all that. And uh, of course we knew who they were then, but um, I think they had, the, the ACDC had sort of left town we were away overseas doing stuff when we were here. We were just sort of a year after, you know, mm. a year following it. But uh, another band I had in Auckland was Skin Divers, which was really successful for a few years. Mm -hmm. But we had a residency there. We didn't tour at all. Uh, uh, but did we tour? No. Yes, we did. We did a um, tour with Jimmy Barnes. Um, it was the only time that band toured. The rest of the time we were resident in a club called Wildlife, mm -hmm. which was on the waterfront in Auckland. Very successful. We used to do two shows a night. Fill the club up, empty it out, and then do another one. And that was sort of how we operated. It was great. That was a good band, but once again, you know, you got all these fucking guys, and you, know, and you just get and you just get tired of it. You just get tired of carrying people's groaning assholes. You know, I'm sorry about it. So I, 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 I sort of prior to that, I met Phil, and we'd had a few jams, me and Jeff, and so all that was going on. Um, but after Skin Divers, I just I had enough and I went down to a, a, little, a city called Rotorua where I uh, settled down um, and became a house husband for like eight years. Mm -hmm. And that's where this guy settled down as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. we all had sort of babies around the same time, eh? Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, right. So it was sort of a bit like that. <coughs> and um, so I sort of come and gone from the music scene. Come and gone. I've always been in it. I've always kept jamming up. Jeff and I always used to jam on Sundays and, and keep our hand in and all that. And uh, But I just got sick of traps in around with a bunch of 
wankers, quite frankly. Well, I think I don't think we'll see any of those bands reforming now, will we, Phil? No, probably not. Just put an end to all of that. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, 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 I'm I'm not being personal there. I'm just it's just a a thing, you know. When you're running a band, it's really hard when you've got to carry people around Mm. who are really keen to be in the band, but they don't want to really cooperate that much. Mm. Mm. They want all the money. And uh, they drag you down, but you know, it's a funny thing. It's music's a funny thing. If you're playing music with people, you've got to have a, a rapport. Mm. And if you don't have that rapport, if it's a pretend rapport, you're stuffed. Mm. Eventually, it'll all come apart, you know. Yeah. So yeah. this thing sounds like a real band. It is a real band. Yeah. That's because it is. Yeah. 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 And you know, the uh, first thing I heard when I heard uh, Repo Man was your drum sound. Right. You know, right. It, it just comes along, it kicks it off. That's right. Yeah. And it's such a signature sound. For a drummer, and very few drummers have a signature sound, don't they? I mean, yeah. you know, I could I could think of Charlie Watts, think of Ringo Starr. Yeah. Um, and you know, when I hear Phil Rudd, I know it's Phil Rudd. Yeah, That's right. I like that. I enjoy that. Mm. So. Yeah. Mm. I mean, even to the point when you were away from ACDC for a while, they didn't sound like ACDC. No, apparently not. No, so, I no. didn't think so either. Mm. I was quite flattering really to come back after you know, after a break and. And, you know, and be complimented the way I was, and, you know, by people I've never seen before. Mm. It's quite good. Repo Man, was that the first song that you wrote for this record? No, no, it was one of the last, one of the last ones. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, that was the last one, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, second to last, isn't it? What yeah, was one of the last ones? Yeah, we we wrote, in, wrote in about six minutes on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The first song uh, of the album we wrote was... Um, the first two songs, what was it? Um, uh, Crazy and Lonely Child were probably the first uh-huh. ones. Right. Well, they're, they're a bit of a different sound, aren't yeah. they? Because I think 40 Days probably is more group? aligned with uh, Repo Man in sound. Well, I guess so. Well, yeah, yeah I guess so. Uh, mm. They were recorded years apart, though. Really? Yeah. Years apart? Yeah, yeah. 20 years apart. Well, no, not 20 years apart. Um, mm. No, the process, we, we had a jam, we went to a studio, we, we tried putting a few things down, didn't work out. I got stroppy and sort of, you know, build my own studio because you know, I'm sort of a self do it yourself or whatever, you know, it was a mistake, but it worked out pretty good this time. Mm-hmm. We brought the studio, we brought us help with that, and, um, you know, they, they helped with the thing all the way along and it, was like, it just grew and, you know, we knew what the, the, the kernel of the thing was, you know, and, um, and you know, we're as happy with it today as we were when we, spoke, when we, when we recorded the first track, you know, right. which was, it, it was, it might have been 20 years ago that we did the first sessions. Yeah. Um, so, is any of those sessions on this album? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. they're all right. Yeah, yeah. The first seven, the seven, seven are from uh, from my studio, and four are from Air Force. Uh, no, sorry, York Street, in York Street in Auckland, uh, engineered by Hayden Taylor, who was a proper engineer, not like me. I thought, okay, look at the, look at the, the box. <laughs> what the fact I do with this? Mm. Well, I worked it out as well. Yeah. yeah. So I knew what I wanted. You know, so that's the key. You know what you want. And not what someone else says you, you think you should have. Oh, fuck that. I want this. So I knew what I wanted. But those guys will tell you, I know what I want. When I, you know, I'm in charge. I've not been in charge. I've been the boss. <laughs> good. That's really good. Really good. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever performed any of these songs live? No. No? Oh, well, well, apart from that. I pissed up on a boat in Rotorua. They're still complaining about the noise now, but it was, mm. it was a while ago. Yeah. But uh, it was, see, um, when I had my little break from ACDC, about eight years, I was sort of, you know, twiddled my thumbs and once and thought I was going to do something. So, you know, with a musical sort of background, I kind of, you know, went that way. And um, then a bit of an electrician, I kind of, you know, I like the idea of building a studio. And you know, I think it always got pretty good, you know. I hope everyone enjoys it and, you know, I hope it doesn't sound old or dated or whatever, because it's, you know, it's not. It's um, the best tracks were done uh, last summer, which is, you know, quite, quite recent. Mm. Which is probably the four last ones. Oh, they're all good. Everyone likes it. I don't know what's good. I just know what I like. Yeah, but I guess you know, Repo Man <coughs> is a sound that we do know. Uh, you know, had you presented that song to ACDC, I would imagine that you know it could have sat on one of their albums as well. Oh, no, well, yeah, that's not really. No, I play drums for ACDC. That's all I do. I play drums for them. And I fucking love it. Mm. I love it. I love playing with these guys too. And when ACDC calls up, I drop these guys and I go back to work. Mm-hmm. And when it works out, I come back and I hang out with these guys. But this is going to, you know, this is going to be good for everyone. So yeah. I hope it sells a few and it'll be good. So. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a good start for a debut album. Yeah, I think yeah. you qualify yeah. for an ARIA debut. An uh, ARIA debut? New, new yeah. artist, yeah, new you could award, qualify for an ARIA debut. Awards already. Yeah, yeah, that'd be, that'd <laughs> oh, be no. pretty funny, wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> funny, it'd be hilarious. Yeah. 
Because it all started, uh, as I mentioned, back <coughs> in the Buster Brown days, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is, you know, pivotal. it's an incredible pivotal. album because it's so pivotal to uh, the Australian music industry and what was uh, happening just before the explosion hit, wasn't it? Angry, And Angry oh. Anderson on this record, Phil Rudd on this record, Lobby yeah. Lloyd producing this record. That's right, Lobby Lloyd produced it, that's right. Yep. Yep. Uh, is he still around, Lobby? Or? Lobby died a few it, years ago. Uh, no one told yeah. that, no one tells me anything, so no. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm yeah, but you yeah, know, just funny. some magic moments that were done really before Australian rock took off on an international level, wasn't it? I guess so. Um, you know, there, there were a lot of other bands around at the time. You know, I won't mention any names you know, because I'm, you know, they're not around anymore. You know, Acid is just still around and bigger and better than it's ever been. You know, mm. So we really can't. You know, we nailed it. You know, I mean, there's no one's ever done what Acid is did out of anywhere, really. You know? mm. um, conquered the world, mate. So that's the idea well, of the start. Yeah. You know? A little Napoleon and all of us, I think, you know, especially in Angus. <laughs> because of Napoleon in there, I'll tell you, he loves conquering worlds. He does. Yeah. He does it well. Yeah. yeah. We've just been in the studio. You've just finished a new record. So That's right. Gonna, what's it sounding like? Stunning. Yeah? I haven't heard it, to be honest. No? Uh, I did ring Angus and asked if I could you know, email me something just have to listen to it. You know, so I'll wait and buy a copy if I have to, but you know, you send me something, just one thing to have to listen to. Because it was sounded so good, it was like, fuck. You know, like, yeah? Title yet? No, no title, no, no release date, no new information, nothing. I can no. tell you nothing about it except it's the sound, if I was, had any idea what was going on, it's fucking good, mate. That's all yeah. I can tell you. So. What's one of the song titles, though? No idea. No? No. no. We don't get the words, we just play the, you know, the rhythm. That's all right. will be revealed. All will be revealed. With, okay. uh, with Stevie Young in there. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was great. I, I, I enjoyed playing with Stevie. And, um, yeah, it was great, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was really good. It was yeah. very, uh, I won't say easy, but I was very comfortable. I'm very comfortable in that situation. Mm. And um, no, I don't make hard work out of it. Um, you know, ten days, it was, I was done. Mm. I mean, it's not because I'm, I'm not sure why that was. was ten it? days is pretty uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, well, like, I remember, it, you know, like those first five ACDC albums came out in two and a half years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know? Isn't that an incredible amount of work is, yeah. to do in two and a half years? Bands, you know, now go ten years and it's just, you know, matter yeah. of fact well, that's in right. between records. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's part of the success of uh, of the band that you were in, uh, because it was so such a hard working band. Oh well, yeah, we we're, 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 we are a hard working band, you know. When, like it's eight years between the last two tours and rightly so, I mean you need eight years off after mm. <laughs> But you know, um, um, we've always worked hard. I mean, it's a hard working band, you always know when you know this, you know you're going to work fucking hard, mate, or well, you're out. Mm. So that's just how it goes, you know. So um, I love it, I love it. Mm. Right. It's the best thing you could possibly have uh, without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. That's a drummer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you tried Eddie's restaurant? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yes. What's the recommendation? Uh, I haven't seen the menu re recently. <laughs> um, but. Uh, the beef rib, mate, with mashed potato oh, no, and like fucking gravy. Oh, like really? Beef oh, rib and mashed potatoes? Oh, I like the pork belly um, <laughs> thing they had going there. The for food is stunning. Yeah. Oh, mate, really. <coughs> it was stunning. I take it you're not the chef. No shit. <laughs> 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 I can boil an egg. I can boil a hard-boiled egg and make it soft. No, I can't cook anything. But So how would you get into the restaurant business then? Well, uh, the, there was a restaurant at the marina where my boat is. I'm a bit of a boat here. Yeah? And... Um, um, it was for sale. So I'll buy it. So I just bought it and we turned it into Phil's place. I was, I was going to build a new studio, you know, and believe it or not, my old studio went sort of um, west um, with the, um, the, the, uh, the last relationship. And um, I had my budget to build a new studio. Of course, the restaurant sucked all that out of it, so uh, it doesn't sound that great. But it's funny because all the brickwork in the, in the restaurant is all um, taken off the brick that I put in the studio, but it looks much nicer. Really, yeah. We did it a different way, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great restaurant. The food is stunning, is. that's all I can tell you. The mm. food is stunning. It's a beautiful place to sit and eat, and the food is fantastic. You know, probably could do with more population to have a successful profit-making restaurant, you know? but I keep going, I keep plodding on. You know? it's a, the population will build one day and not make some money, but <laughs> until then, it's a good place to eat. Yeah, it yeah. is, yeah. yeah. Now, you are a professional uh, helicopter pilot. No, I'm not, no. No, no? no. Just, a, just a helicopter pilot? Oh, I'm a good helicopter pilot. Yeah. So that's it. all private? Just private. your own personal fund? All private. My, my boss has a commercial helicopter pilot's licence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I haven't. I haven't got any sort of license at the moment because I won't tell you why. <laughs> 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 I can't believe anything people tell you about people, but 
But I still fly my machine around, you know, and mm. uh, I'm, I'm, I fly, you know, I'm flying pretty well at the moment. It's mm. I, I, I've wanted to fly a helicopter since I was six years old. There's an old show called Whirly Birds, you know, and um, I don't think anyone else, ever, anyone else has ever seen it, but uh, I saw it, and I always wanted to fly a helicopter, mm -hmm. and now I can. It's fantastic. There's nothing like flying a helicopter. Mm. Nothing. Yeah. What about you, Badge? Any hidden talents in the... Uh... Not really, man. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's not giving it away, man. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I don't fly any helicopters or anything like that. I <laughs> certainly couldn't drive like Phil does either. <laughs> but, um, well, I probably could. <laughs> you were drunk enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, not really. I'm, you know, no, nothing special, really. Just like singing and playing. And, yeah, he does that and, well, uh, Other than that, I don't do a great deal. I like going fishing and... Um, I like spending time with my kids when I can, yeah. and uh, you know, we just regularly go. That's yeah, cruise. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, just before we uh, head off, uh, just tell us about that other bloke you've got in the band, Jeffrey Martin. Jeffrey Martin. Yeah, yeah where, Jeffrey. Where is Jeffrey? I know. We should be talking about him too. <coughs> we oh, should be. But so, no. You know, like the the head job album, Phil's head job album, is actually a three piece band. That's right. That's it is. right. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so if anyone knows where Jeff is, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeffrey. what's Jeff's story? Uh, uh, it's a long story. Like it's a long story. story. Yeah, he's been a good friend of mine since the seventies. He was always in other bands. I was in I was in my bands, and he was in other bands. But we always knew each other, you know. And I always used to look at him and listen to him and think, "Fuck, I'd love to play with him one day." It was always in my mind, you know. I just loved Jeff's playing. He, was, he yeah, stood out from everybody else in the scene at the time. Yeah. He had twin Marshall amps and stereo. Back then, it was unheard of, and he he just created a great sound. And I can remember in the Think Band um, saying to my guitarist Phil Whitehead, we were at a concert and big outdoor concert in Auckland and Jeff's band was playing first and I remember standing next to Phil and saying, now there's a guitar sound. I went, oh, stupidest thing I ever see. You <laughs> upset people, you don't think about it, you know. No, yeah. But I really upset him because mm. he thought I was implying they're not as good as him or whatever it was. Yeah, you cool. learn I things in your life. Feet. <laughs> but I remember doing that and then um, then after that and Phil got the pip a bit and all that. So I, um, that's probably good, Badge. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. right. And so band, Jeff and I it? hooked up and... Um, we just started playing together and we are really close friends. He's a great guy. Great he's guy. an exceptional person. He's a real gentleman, Jeff. Yeah. Gentleman, Jeff. And um, play, you know, and, and um, easy to have around. Easy guy to do anything with. Mm. Lovely guy, Jeff. Just can't find him sometimes. Mm. <laughs> but other than that. No, he's just fine. We were going to bring him with us. But I was like last minute to bring Badge. I was going to come by myself. But now that... To back up now, so I've given you a chance to sort of you know, get out of there because I'm not, I'm not, I don't do a lot of press, as you know. I mean, you know, I've, I've done three interviews in 40 years, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not my forte, you know. It's um, tough to that when we talk about it now. And I want to say, like the record, that's all now. Yeah, well, yeah. That's all I've got to say. It's all on the record, right? What I've got to say. You know, you've, you've got something to talk about now with the new yeah, record. Yeah, 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 what's it called? Uh, something to say, I think. Uh, something to say. Yeah. Wouldn't have been a bad, bad title for a little bad, yeah. Something to say, yeah. Yeah, something to say. Something Featuring, to say. Featuring, um, well... Did you come up with that title? An no. Angry Anderson with hair. Was it <laughs> Gary Anderson or Angry Anderson then? Mouse. He was Mouse? <laughs> <laughs> He won't, he won't like that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, angry. He's yeah, quite angry. Yeah, there's a piece of information we never knew. No, he probably, he probably hate me for it. Oh, when your nickname's <laughs> Mouse, no wonder you become angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't what the fuck is so angry about it. <laughs> no, he's right, he's right. I've seen, I've seen it for years. Yeah. I was going to ring him last night because uh, uh, Sammy from Albert stopped by the hotel in Sydney last night. And... Um, and he uh, left me angry his number. I was going in the ring, but I was in bed at six o'clock last night. I was asleep at half past six. Mm. I'm old, mm. <laughs> but not cold. <laughs> so now there's some, um, yeah, we've got to catch up with Angry, but some. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him on his show, How So? Have you seen it? No. Oh, oh yeah, man. It's no. Fucking hilarious, it. Really? Mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's hilarious. Well worth hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So I, bought, so I, think I, I think I bought it again in the ABC shop, didn't I? Don't know. I did. Yeah, I did, yeah. Because yeah. <coughs> every time I play it, I, I get, at home I play it to someone, and after a couple of years I was like, fuck, I can't listen to it anymore. <laughs> but it's hilarious. So what I do is, I say, hey, take it and play it at home. Because yeah. like, you can't do anything else when it's on. It's just like madness, you know? Mm. It is funny. It's mm. really funny. Mm. It, um, it really tickles my, my, my fancy. I'll be there. checking out Angry Anderson or Gary Anderson or Mouse Anderson. No, angry. Angry. <laughs> angry. Yeah. angry. You only pop some up in it every now and again. Yeah. 
he's the head of the big biker gang. Yeah. And he plays that part well, because he was a biker angry, you know? Mm. I know he's he's only three foot tall. I know, it's, I know how tall he is. Yeah. I know, he's very short. Mm. Ain't you angry? I know you're angry. <laughs> <laughs> he's even angrier now. <laughs> so. yeah, angrier Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and if you use it angry, I want to, I'll run a shop. <laughs> and with that, uh, Phil and Badge, thanks for joining us here at Noise11.com. Cheers, thank you. Thanks, Paul.